Hello, this is Shannon from UEN, and in this short video, we are going to be talking about how to create a visually engaging homepage that will be simple for your students and your parents to navigate. To begin, adding images can add so much to your homepage. In this example here, I not only brought in images to use as buttons to help with navigation, but I also added a different font as an image. So let me show you how I did that. You can do the same thing that I've done in many different programs, PowerPoint, Google Drawings, Canva.com, and Keynote, to name a few. But my easy image creation tool of choice is Google Slides. You can see that I created the banner for the top of my homepage just by choosing a font I like and typing in a text box. I also created buttons by first inserting a shape, in this case it was a rectangle, and then I used the formatting features, fill color, border color, border weight, and border dash in order to customize it how I'd like, and then I duplicated it three more times. And then from there just changed the font and my fill color and border color to give me some variety to my homepage, but still helping me to create consistently sized buttons. So once I've created images that I would like to use in my Canvas course, then I take a screenshot of each individual item, and then back over on my Canvas page, my homepage, I went ahead and inserted those images, those screenshots, to then become buttons on my homepage. You may notice that my images or buttons are in a two by two box. And then farther down on my screen, I have a YouTube video and another image that are organized to sit next to each other. Um, the best way to organize content on your page, if it's not just going to be stacked vertically, but if you'd like to have things next to each other, the best way to organize your content is by using tables. To insert a table, in the Rich Content Editor, you are going to find the Table button, which is on the far left, and you're going to click the down arrow. When you hover your mouse over Table, you get a grid that pops out, and you're just going to move your mouse over the size of the table that you would like. Once the table size you would like is highlighted, you're going to click. Your table will insert wherever the cur your cursor is on the page. When the table inserts, you will see a menu that will let you add and delete rows and even delete the entire table, but also under table properties will let you customize what your table looks like. As I click on this, I have my general tab where you can change the table size and you also have a drop down menu that will let you align where your table sits on your home page. There is also an advanced tab. Now back here on my home page, my buttons are in a table that doesn't have visible lines but the table at the bottom of the page has black lines around it. And this is the area where you can customize that. You can try it in two different places. You can try going to border style, click on select, and then you can do none or hidden. Those should work. If for some reason those don't, on the, in the field where it says border color, you can type the word transparent. One of those options will get rid of those lines for you. Once you've customized the table how you'd like, you can insert images into this table. You can highlight the cells and then use the rich content editor to align your buttons however you'd like. So if you're thinking about trying to put more than one or two images next to each other, a table is going to be the best way for you to organize those images. Another great visual to use on your homepage is video. I'm going to take this YouTube video out to show you how simple it is to get this type of video onto your Canvas page. 
So the very first thing you'll have to do is go to somewhere like YouTube to find your video. So let's say we have this great place value video. I'm going to copy the URL, come back to my Canvas course. I am going to find the insert slash edit media button from the rich content editor. In the box that comes up in the source field, I'm just going to paste the URL. There are dimensions already built into my video. I am going to adjust my video to 300 so it fits better in my table. And because my constrained proportions button is checked, when I click in this button, it automatically does the math and preserves the ratio of the video. I'm going to click OK and now it's there. Now, if you just wanted to insert a, a YouTube video on its own, you wouldn't need to insert it inside a table. But because I wanted it next to this other content, a table is where I chose to put it. Some of this is just going to be personal preference as you decide what your homepage is going to look like. Finally, adding links to content within your Canvas course and also to outside websites can help with getting the students to the content they need. If each week I want my students to read through a weekly wonder at the site Wonderopolis, I could do it like this. First, I need to find the website I would like my students to go to, in this case, Wonderopolis. You can see that the wonder that I found I took a screenshot of it earlier, and that's the image that you see back on the Canvas page. Then I'm going to click on the wonder I'd like them to read so that I can get the most specific URL possible, and I am going to copy it. Next, I'm going to come back to my Canvas page, click on the image that I would like to link to a website, come to the chain link in the rich content editor and I'm going to paste my URL there. It flashed yellow for just a second and now it's active as soon as I save the page so that when students click on it that acts as a button that takes them to an external website. Now for the buttons above let's try linking one to content in the Canvas site. So if I click on Storytime, I want it to take my students to the Storytime page. I'll select it, and then I'll come over here to my Links tab, and under Pages, I will select the page titled Storytime from Space. Again, it flashed yellow for just a second, and now that button is active so that once my page saves, if I click on story time, it takes me to another page in my Canvas course. And if I click on my image, my wonder image, it takes me to the Wonderopolis wonder of the day that I'd like my students to read. I hope these few tips will help you add some interest to your homepage and make it easy to navigate for both your students and your parents.